blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who journeys with us these 40 days and sustains us with the gift of grace. Amen. 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 Let us acknowledge before God and one another our need for repentance and God's mercy. Holy God, we, we confess, confess to you our faults and failings. Too often we neglect and do not trust your holy word. We take for ourselves instead of giving to others. We spoil rather than steward your creation. We cause hurt through your call us to heal. We choose fear over compassion. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us as we seek to follow in your way of life. Amen. Hear the good news. God so loved the world that God gave the only Son so that all may receive life. This promise is for you. God embraces you with divine mercy, forgives you in Christ's name, and revives you in the Spirit's power. Amen. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, our strength, the struggle between good and evil rages within and around us, and the devil and all the forces that defy you tempt us with empty promises. Keep us steadfast in your word, and when we fall, raise us again and restore us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Well, I think we only have one young one back there. So if you'd like to come up, you can. Um, and then you can go off to Kid Zone. Do you want to come up here? So I have something to show you, which would, I think would be easier to see from up close. <laughs> Hi. So, do you see this? Hey, how old are you? Seven. seven. Oh my gosh, do I have a story for you. Did you know that a seven-year-old stole this from church. Mm -hmm. Yep, and I know it was not you because this happened 70 years ago. Hmm. <laughs> Yesterday, someone came to church, a man who turns out to be 77, and he said that 70 years ago when he was seven years old, he saw this and he thought, oh, that looks so fun, and he took it and kept it all this time, all this time. Have you ever seen something that you really wanted and you were tempted just to take it? Yeah, every time I go through the candy aisle, I'm tempted, yep, because I, I really love chocolate, right? And so there are lots of things that tempt us, but you know what's hard about, so about something like this? He took it because he really wanted it right then, but you know, he spent the next 70 years, whenever he was reminded of it, feeling so guilty that he had done that. And so it wasn't actually worth it. 
it wasn't worth it to take it, right? And so today, today we're going to do something called the noisy offering, and it would be very tempting to just like take there. There's not just change in there. There's also dollar bills in there. And I saw a five dollar bill in there. It'd be tempting just to like take that out, except that then it wouldn't go to the victims of earthquakes. It wouldn't go to those people who most need it. And then you would remember that you did that for so long, and it wouldn't be worth it. And so what temptation is, is doing something we want, but that is not actually good for us or the world around us. Okay? So that's what we talk about today. Um, so we're going to do our noisy offering um, right after we pray. Would, would you go around with me to, to receive the noisy offering? Okay, cool. So we just, we take a bucket around, and everyone out there, you've heard some people get out their change, because they're like, oh, now I know what's coming. Go ahead and dig out change. Yep, so we're going to collect our noisy offering in a bucket, so you can also hear it, which is kind of fun. Okay? Awesome. All right. Can you repeat after me for a prayer? Can everyone help us? Sure. All right. Dear God, Dear God thank, you thank you for helping us for helping us overcome our temptations. Overcome our temptations. Help us. Help us to always do. To always do what is right. What is right. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. So I think we're gonna sing "Jesus Loves Me" while we go around and collect our. Noisy and what offering. is that thing? Oh, sorry. Oh, I didn't give away the mystery. Who knows what this is that I didn't already tell? Do you know? Mr. Tom, do you know? <laughs> no, it's what an usher uses. It's a counter. <coughs> click, click. Yep. Yep. Very fun. All right, let's sing Jesus Loves Me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, good morning and welcome to worship on this first Sunday in Lent as we uh, begin our 40 days together, uh, as we did on Ash Wednesday. Um, I think that I think they got a head start and you already have your welcome pads, so go ahead and fill those out. And as, uh, as you finish filling those out, they'll come back around and collect them. Um, please note if you'd like a pastor to be in touch with you. If you are joining us online, please, by all means, uh, share a comment of greeting so we can also rejoice in your presence with us. I do have uh, two prayers to share with you. Um, they were, of course, sent out by email this week, um, but in case you did not get that, um, Francine Siegel, who we've been praying for, uh, died, and like her husband who died not all that long before her, there, there is no funeral or memorial service, and so we, we are to remember in our own ways a dearly beloved person and saint of the church, Francine. 
And then also this week, Sue Fitzsimmons has died. Um, Sue was not one to leave quietly, though, so there will, in fact, be a funeral service for here, her here at Epiphany that will be uh, a month from yesterday, so on March 25th at 11 a.m. Uh, that will also include a luncheon afterwards. You know, Sue always stuck around after worship to have fellowship and to talk with people, and so I hope that you will, too, on that day, and um, if you would like to help with the luncheon at all, uh, please call into the church office. You can also let Carol Thomas know. I know that she's doing some uh, arranging around that. Um, but we could use help with desserts and also with um, setting up and cleaning up as you are able. And then there are a few things that I want to particularly point out about life in, uh, in Epiphany these days. One is that we are fully focused on Bible study through the season of Lent. Uh, not only are we continuing our weekly study on, um, on the Bible, having just begun the New Testament on Wednesday evenings, but we are also having a daytime study for the season of Lent beginning this Wednesday at 11 a.m., and that is on the Lord's Prayer and led by Pastor Carl Myers. If you're not sure who that is, that's that guy right there. He's waving. There you go. Pastor Carl Myers at 11 a.m. That will usually be in the parlor, um, and they will uh, study the Lord's Prayer together and then have, um, have lunch afterwards for anyone who has brought their lunch along. Um, let's see. Ah, and then there are lots of ways to serve here at Epiphany, and there are four specific invitations I have for you. Um, one is if you would consider donating financially or in kind to our feeding ministries, whether through Loaves and Fishes or uh, through Epiphany for the deliveries. We are asking for both. Um, for both, we need peanut butter. We just we always need peanut butter. And so that is our particular ask. I've seen peanut butter land even today in the grocery cart out there. So thank you to those who have brought that in. Um, and certainly those of you who are going grocery shopping, just grab an extra peanut butter or two. And then we are also looking for five volunteers from the church along with five volunteers from the school to help with a moving project on um, Saturday the 25th. Yes, that's the same day as the funeral, but we are starting at 9 a.m. to move things around in the basement to rearrange things to um, better serve the feeding work that's happening here. And so if you're able to come that day, please let me know um, so I know when we get our five people. I think we have two so far, so all I need is three more people from here and then five folks from the school. And then third, we are looking for some folks who might be able to teach um, if anyone has any skills in dance or photography. The students in our Wednesday after school program have expressed interest in both of those, and so if you have skills in either of those two areas, that you would be able to teach um, a week or two of an hour and 15 minute class with them, please let me know. And then finally, fourth, we are looking for some volunteers to help with homework. I know I've shared this before. We've actually adjusted the schedule because there are a number of folks who have said, well, I would love to help, but I'm not free until five. <laughs> and so we've actually changed it. So now we're doing academic work from three to four, and then again from five to six. So if you would like to come and help with that, please let me know and I'll give you all the details. All right. And now, at this time, we continue our worship as we read from God's Word. A reading from Genesis. Mm. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to till it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, you may freely eat of every tree in the garden, but the tree of knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat it, you shall die. Now the serpent was more crafty than other wild animals that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God say you shall not eat from any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, 
we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But God said, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it, or you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, you will not die, for God knows that when you eat it, eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took it of its fruit and ate, and she also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. Holy wisdom, holy word. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and afterward he was famished. The tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, One does not live by bread alone but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him again, Again it is written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said to him, All these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left him, and suddenly angels came and waited on him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, Saturday. It seems like Saturday has become the day for funerals here at Epiphany Church when beloved members of this church die, whether I'm speaking at their funeral or not, I find myself reflecting on the lives they've lived, at least as much of their lives as I have shared with them. And lately, those beloved have included precious people like Carolyn and Pastor Yost, and Regina Hayes and Dorothy Smith, and Francis Seagull, mm -hmm. and now the most recent of all, dear Sue Fitzsimmons. I wonder if any of them ever spent time in the later days of their life just reflecting back over the years they've been given. Whether they might have been tempted to do some things differently back there, or tempted to make some significant decisions differently, or whether they might have chosen an entirely different path in their life. Who might have been trying to get them off the path that they wanted intentionally to walk 
as long as they lived? Could it have been the same one who tempted Jesus in the wilderness in that story that the deacon just read from Matthew's gospel? I've been thinking a lot this past week about my own life. Like, what if I had been tempted to take an entirely different direction with my life? Where might I be now? How would my life be different these days? What might I have missed out on? Well, by the same token, you can look back. Some of you can look back at some of the decisions and some of the choices that you've made along the way. And you have full reason to be pleased with them. Much of the news this past week has been about former President Jimmy Carter. Since he has entered home hospice there in Plains, Georgia at an age late in his 90s, you might have an opinion of the man and his life and his choices. The New York Times had an editorial this past Wednesday that occupied half the editorial page. And across the top, it said, the most misunderstood president of the last century. Kai Bird, who wrote that editorial in the, in the Times this past week, said the man was not what you think. He was tough. And he was extremely intimidating. Jimmy Carter was probably the most, he went on to write this, Jimmy Carter was probably the most intelligent, hardworking, and decent man to have occupied the Oval Office in the 20th century. And he said so because he knew that the editorial writer knew that as a Southerner, Jimmy Carter knew that racism was an original sin of this country. And he said so at the extreme discomfort of many Americans back in his day and a good number of fellow Southerners. Jimmy Carter, he said, chose to use his power righteously and honorably and morally, ignoring politics and instead choosing to do the right thing. As I read that editorial, the first day of Lent, Ash Wednesday night, I could imagine that that president, that former president in Haas this care in his modest home, oh so modest, modest home in Plains, Georgia, was not disappointed with the path he chose to live in his life. Not disappointed. You know, Lent, these 40 days, are about life. It's about the life we live right here in the years we are here and the life that is coming for God's beloved as it came for those people I named at the opening of my sermon. The life and the teachings and the examples of Jesus Christ all urge us, you, me, all of the people who are watching again this morning faithfully online, the life and teachings and examples of Jesus urge us to live this life to the best we can by who we are with what God has given us. 
It is said that General Stonewall Jackson made this statement, this statement, do the best you can with what you have where you are. That's now for us. Do the best you can with what you have where you are. Thomas Morgan was an instructor at the United States Air Force Academy in Colorado for 38 years. He had learned through his lifelong career in the military that many young recruits in the Air Force needed more than just intense physical training along with mental training. They needed to hear the real life stories of soldiers who had served out there on the battlefield where life and death are so real. So he brought soldiers who had been on the battlefield into the classroom with his new young recruits. And the young recruits asked questions of the soldiers, questions about weapons they carried and technical things they needed to know about the equipment they were wearing in order to survive in the heat of battle. Well, one of the soldiers asked, answered one of the young recruits this way in response to his question. He said, I survived, obviously, I survived, but it wasn't because of everything I had on me. It was what I had in me that made the difference for me out there in battle. It was what he had in himself that helped him get through those tough, tough days. When you're in a battle, maybe a battle in your life with depression, fear, anxiety, doubt, worry, when those things are nagging at you, when you're unprepared for those times, those dark moments that come most likely into most of our lives at one time or another. It's absolutely essential that you have come to know and to believe and to trust that like those people I named at the beginning of my sermon, it's essential that you know that you are a beloved child of God. And that God named you, named you his own in that moment, that mysterious moment when you were baptized. And God promised that he would be with you and for you along life's path, be it short or long, and that he will see you through whatever is happening around you or in you. So stay close to God during these 40 days of Lent. Come here on Wednesday morning at 11 o'clock and hear the assurances of God's presence as we share the Holy Bible and hear how God has shown his presence in the lives of other people who are gathered there around you, how God has helped them get through some tough times. And then come back on Wednesday evenings and take with you the real presence of Christ Jesus in the bread and the wine of the Holy Communion. T keep in touch with God. Sometime, every day, 
in this year of Lent. I sometimes think of Martin Luther and how he suffered extreme anxiety and worry. That's not always the first paragraph in the story of his life. He had such a temptation to throw some things to the wind at times. Then there were times when it almost seemed to Luther like the devil was present there in the room or in his cubicle in the monastery. And on several occasions, history has recorded that he picked up things there in his room and threw them in the direction of where he thought the devil was. But in the end, in the end, Martin Luther left these words in one of the greatest hymns of the Reformation. When he wrote this, and though this world with devils filled should threaten to undo us, we will not fear, for God has willed his truth to triumph through us, from within us. The prince of darkness grim, we tremble not for him. His rage we can endure, for lo, his doom is sure. One little word shall fail him. We will be tempted. That's life. When the devil tries to point out all the mistakes of your past, remind the devil of his future. And then humble yourselves this Lent. Humble yourselves before God. And go out there and do what God, what God has asked you to do with your life always remembering that you are God's beloved child. Amen.
We confess the faith of the church. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated or kneel as you are able. Sustained by God's abundant mercy, let us pray for the church, for the world, and for all of creation. God of mercy, as we enter this season of self-reflection and penance, we ask your mercy on us. Help us to see our weaknesses and failings and give us resolve to correct them. Help us to see our good and guide us that we can continue to help our community and all the people around us. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God of life, we ponder our programs that help our young people in confirmation class, in youth group, and kids zone. We remember our school systems and city neighbors charter school and our Wednesday after school program here. Grant that all these programs help our young people grow in compassion and purpose as they serve you and all creation. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God of grace, bless the efforts of the Mountain of God West African Ministry as they work to share the gospel among their people. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God of love, we praise you and thank you for the leadership of loaves and fishes, and we thank you for the volunteers and government wor workers who helped enable them to become an official nonprofit. Merciful God, receive, receive our prayer. God, our hope, we ask your blessings and comforts for those in need. We remember all those on our prayer list and those whom we name aloud or in the quiet corners of our heart. Martha, Hi. Michelle, Hi. Marcia, Hi. Chris, Hi. MC, Hi. Betty, Loza. Are there others? Merciful God, receive our prayer. God of promise, your goodness is everlasting. We give thanks for the lives of the faithful who now rest in you, especially Francine and Sue. We trust that you will bring us on the last day into the company of all the saints with rejoicing. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O oh God, trusting in your steadfast love and your promise to renew your whole creation through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. And now the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share peace with one another.
Just a reminder that you are welcome to give your gifts online at god-is-love.org slash donate, or you can give your offering here in the sanctuary where the offering plate is that we might boldly proclaim to all those in this community and beyond that God is love. And now the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to give, give our, our thanks, thanks and praise. praise. Holy God, our living water and our merciful guide, together with rivers and seas, wells and springs, we bless and magnify you. You led your people Israel through the desert and provided them water from the rock. We praise you for Christ, our rock and our water, who joined us in our desert, pouring out his life for the world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life, death, and resurrection, we await your salvation for all this thirsty world. Pour out your spirit on this holy food and on all the baptized gathered for this feast. Wash away our sin, that we may be revived for our journey by the love of Christ. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now, I do not often pause in the midst of worship to give a word of explanation, but I will today. We always sing, always, that's a, long, that's a long time. For a long time, we have sung the Lord's Prayer during Lent. It's been a tradition here at Epiphany. However, in the age of live streaming, we have been more um, conscientious around what licenses we have. And we could not legally stream um, the one that we've been singing without paying a bunch of money, right? 200 bucks for four weeks. 200 bucks for four weeks. There we go. Um, and so we are singing a new one to us, though it is in our hymnals. Um, we are singing this version of the Lord's Prayer. I hope that you will uh, join us in this song. And so with confidence, let us join in song, praying as our Savior Christ has taught us. Oh, our Father. invite you to be seated. I invite you to follow the direction of our ushers to come forward to receive communion today. Uh, you will first receive the bread, which is the body of Christ, from me, and then go to either side where there are people uh, ready to uh, distribute the red wine and white grape juice, both of which are the blood of Christ. When you do come to me, please do not immediately eat the wafer, the, the bread, as soon as you get it, but hold on to it so you're ready to dip it into the red wine or white grape juice. You should come to the red wine first and the white grape juice second um, if you are looking for how to be attentive to that. 
And finally, just a reminder that this is not Epiphany's table. It is not even a Lutheran table. It is the Lord's table, and all are welcome at this feast. In fact, I know that there are folks who are joining us online right now who have received their delivery of communion, thanks to those who are willing to make, um, make those deliveries on the last Sunday I of the month. one of the drivers back already. One of the drivers is back already. It's true. I see him back there. <laughs> And now this is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Behold the grace, mercy, and peace of God's love. Take these, and in your hearts be grateful. Amen. Amen. Pastor Fries will also be here for those who wish to have a moment of prayer.
I invite you to stand as you are able as we pray our prayer after communion. Let us pray. Embodied God, at your table we have tasted the goodness of Jesus. With the eyes of our hearts open to your promise, empower us to hear the needs of our neighbors and touch the world with your love. Amen. And now let us pray for the sending of communion. Gracious God, loving all your family with a mother's tender care, as you sent the angel to feed Elijah with heavenly bread, assist those who have set forth to share your word and sacrament with those who are worshiping with us from home. In your love and care, nourish and strengthen those who receive this sacrament, and give us all the comfort of your abiding presence through the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I invite you to take some time to um, have a refreshment and some coffee and have some conversation and get to know some folks around here. I know that there are some newer faces among us, and if you haven't had a chance to meet, today is a great day for that. There are no meetings that I'm familiar with after the service today, so everyone can stay and be a part of some fellowship together. And now God, who fills the creation with abundance, Christ, who spreads his arms in forgiveness, Holy Spirit, who draws us ever near, bless you and bring you to life everlasting. Amen. Go in peace. Tell the good news that God is love.